Day two of Indianapolis 500 qualifying had a bit of everything. Kyle Larson impressed, Graham Rahal got some reprieve, and the best team in IndyCar remains the best team in IndyCar. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Kyle Larson turned in an incredibly impressive performance during Sunday's Fast 12 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and then subsequently the Fast 6 because he went ahead and put himself into the Fast 6 on Sunday evening. Yeah, sure, it made his travel plans to North Wilkesboro a bit more hectic, but thankfully NASCAR pushed the start time of the All-Star Race back by 16 minutes to help accommodate Kyle Larson's impressive run at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where he will start 5th on Sunday, next Sunday, that being, in the Indianapolis 500. A top five start for the rookie after he turned in an impressive four-lap average of 232.846 mile per hour. I mean, a monster run for Kyle Larson, a guy who's never done this before, in a car that was probably more trimmed out than he really wanted it to be. Thankfully, there were no Chevy Plenum issues because as soon as Team Penske had an issue with one, well, then everybody's got to get fixed for it. I'm just kidding. Will Power had one on uh, Sunday morning and was not pleased about it at all, uh, amongst a few other things in very typical willpower fashion. But for Kyle Larson, starting fifth, middle of the second row, is a massive accomplishment. Team Penske locks out the front row. He'll have his teammate Alexander Rossi to his inside and Santino Ferrucci on his outside. For Kyle Larson, he's very much in contention to win this race come next Sunday. Yeah, the 200 laps at the Indianapolis 500 are absolutely grueling, and they're completely different than what we just saw in qualifying. You have to have raceability built into that car. You have to have a car that's good in traffic. You have to have a car that can get out there and lead, and you have to know how to time these passes. So Kyle Larson's going to be going to school on Monday during the practice session, as well as on carb day for that final two-hour practice session before the Indianapolis 500 next Sunday. But for Larson, this is a dream, right? Other than winning the pole, having a top five start in your first Indianapolis 500 is a massive accomplishment. I saw somebody in the internet say, were people this psyched or this hyped up for Kurt Busch when he did it back in 2014? And I think it was a bit different when Kurt did it. When Kurt did it, there was certainly a ton of interest in it, right? But Kurt was in a different point of his career. He wasn't the NASCAR Cup Series points leader. He hadn't been a NASCAR Cup Series champion for quite a few years, well, a decade at that point, uh, from when he won it in 2004. And he certainly didn't have the lore behind him that Kyle Larson does, right? Kyle Larson is regarded as the, what, currently the best American race car driver right now. You could make an argument he's the best race car driver in the world. Of course, there's multiple different disciplines, but he's a guy that's going out there right now and putting himself into different disciplines to try. And we're getting Kyle Larson trying this in the prime of his career, which I think is another thing that has really just put this you know, celebration of this attempt at the double over the top. There's going to be a ton of Hendrick Blue mixed with papaya in the grandstands next Sunday at the Indianapolis 500. Like I said before, there's a reason the McLaren merch trailer is like 60% Kyle Larson uh, merch. There's a reason that IMS and the IndyCar shops and, you know, uh, merch tents around the speedway are stocked with Kyle Larson merch. I mean, I even got caught up in the Kyle Larson hype and I went ahead and bought a Kyle Larson diecast right here because it's a cool attempt, right? I need to find a Kurt Busch one as well. Uh, I'm going to run out of shelf space at some point. But for Kyle Larson, massive accomplishment. You also had Jeff Gordon following him around like a proud dad. It was like, it's just super wholesome moments. Jeff Gordon living vicariously through uh, through Kyle Larson. I must have Jimmy Johnson. Living vicariously through Kyle Larson. And you just have to wonder, because Jeff Gordon would have been a perfect candidate to run the double and the Indianapolis 500 and the Coke 600 in the same day. And honestly, it, it feels like we got robbed of that opportunity. Yeah, Tony Stewart doing it was great. Robbie Gordon doing it, fantastic. Kurt Busch, John Andretti, all those guys doing it was a really cool story. But Jeff Gordon doing it in his prime, like Kyle Larson doing it in his prime, would have been monumental. It would have been huge for both races. And I think that's why this Kyle Larson one feels a little bit different. So Kyle Larson, he will start fifth on Sunday in the Indianapolis 500. As for the rest of the front row, or the rest of the grid, rather, the front row was locked out. Scott McLaughlin turned in a monstrous 234.220 mile per hour four lap average. Great run by him. That was untouchable. Even Will Power saw those first two laps come up and was like, yeah, this is done for me. Give me my water bottle because we're going to be starting second, uh, which is a bit of a bummer, right? I think Will Power really wants an Indianapolis 500 pole after being known as the 
best the best qualifier in IndyCar, having an Indy 500 pole on your resume would be a nice little accomplishment, a feather in the cap, if you will, for him. Will Power, of course, will start second. Joseph Newgarden, everyone's favorite habitual push-to-pass-button pusher, uh, will be starting P3. And he couldn't even say that he was bummed about it. He just had to be the most corporate version of Joseph Newgarden, being like, I'm so happy for the team, the team, the team, this and that. Uh, we get it. We get it. You're a cyborg. You're not real. The Terminator just not as interesting alexander rossi will start fourth rossi had an interesting comment uh after qualifying after the fast six where he said there's been a lot of noise coming from them them being penske and he said it adds a lot of motivation for next week alexander rossi being pissed off is good for everybody i mean remember a couple years ago at the indianapolis 500 when oriel servia was blocking him as a lap down card down the front stretch and rossi takes his full arm out and gives him the finger yeah a piss off Alexander Rossi is going to be good for everybody, and I'm here for it. Santino Ferrucci will start sixth. Of course, Kyle Larson will start fifth. Ferrucci, they have Michael Cannon on their team over there, and everywhere Michael Cannon goes, whatever team he's at, those cars gain a ton of speed at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it's no different with AJ Foyt Racing. What is different is Team Penske and AJ Foyt Racing have an alliance now. And everybody thought it was going to be more towards like helping AJ Foyt Racing get better on road and street courses. And while it definitely has, Penske having access to whatever Michael Cannon does to make his cars go faster on the speedway has certainly helped them out. And Colton Herta kind of took exception to it and he said they got they found a cheap way to get Michael Cannon. Ferrucci also wanted to make sure that Michael Cannon got credit for the fact that the Penske cars were very quick this week. So yes. They went to school and they did their homework, but they also got a ton of help from one of the best engineers at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We also had the last row shootout on Sunday as well, and that was comprised of Graham Rahal for the second year in a row trying to not miss the Indianapolis 500, Marcus Erickson, Catherine Legg, and her teammate Nolan Siegel, the 19-year-old who flipped over uh, just a couple days ago. So now everybody was left wondering who would be the odd man out. And for a long time, it looked like it was going to be Marcus Erickson. Why? Not because he didn't necessarily have speed. He pulled a Mark Martin. And at the end of his third lap of qualifying, he thought that was the end of the fourth lap. So he let off. And then the pit wall comes over and they're screaming at him, keep going, keep going. And yeah, it didn't work out for Marcus Erickson. He had a four lap average of 220 mile per hour after his run. And then everybody sat around and waited, right? You had Marcus Erickson sitting on the outside looking in. It was then Catherine Legg, Graham Rahal, and then Nolan Siegel. Marcus Erickson goes out with seven minutes to go, locks himself into the field, puts Graham Rahal on the bubble now. And you're like, for a second year in a row, is history going to repeat itself? Is Graham Rahal going to get knocked out in the Indianapolis 500 once again? But thankfully, mercifully, it's not a house of horrors. Uh, at least not today, it's not, for Graham Rahal, he got a little bit of a re reprieve because Nolan Siegel went back out there in an attempt to qualify for his first Indianapolis 500 with his parents sitting there waiting and watching, looking very stressed, just as stressed as Marcus's wife did when he failed to qualify on his first run. Nolan Siegel goes out there, and then he's a 19-year-old kid. He has zero fear, and that's exactly what happened. He sent it unfortunately pushed a little bit too high out of turn one bounces off the wall breaks the toe link and then goes into turn two spins out did not flip over this time which is unfortunate but yeah it sucks for him he said it just as much basically when he got out of the infield care center it was credit off hats off to the kid right he flipped over a couple days ago he comes back and just goes complete full sin that car never had the speed in it 229 was about the most they could get out of it. Tony Kanaan went down there earlier today to try to help them out, not from an engineering or setup standpoint, just more of morale, driver coaching, trying to help Nolan Siegel get into the race. Charlie Kimball uh, was on the radio uh, with him, with Nolan Siegel, guiding him through this and you know treated him like he was his own kid. It was actually kind of cool to listen to, telling him how proud he is of him, just trying to make sure that Nolan Siegel is in a good headspace going into his qualifying run there. And unfortunately, he will not race in the Apples 500. Dale Coyne Racing will only have one car in, that being Catherine Legg, who joked afterwards with NBC that she said, I should have gone to college and got a proper job. <laughs> Joking, because it would have been way less stressful than what she just had to go through on Sunday afternoon at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But overall, the 
Indy 500 qualifying format remains fantastic. I know we were maybe some of us were skeptical about it a few years ago and they made some tweaks here and there. It's phenomenal. It's drama to the absolute max. Uh, the way that the broadcast does it as well, where they don't show you the times like with a tracker and taking up three quarters of the screen like the NASCAR broadcast does. You have to wait for that speed to pop up on the graphic and then the entire grandstand goes wild all at the same time. Yeah, that is absolute electric television, and I'm here for it every single time. So next Sunday, the Indianapolis 500, the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. Kyle Larson starts P5. Where is he going to finish at? Will he finish better than fifth, or is he going to finish worse, worse than fifth? Let me know in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.